I spent 100 days inside of Windcraft. What? You have no idea what Windcraft is? Pfft. Yes, you do. Technoblade himself said it, remember? So Hypixel recently released their own unique take on the Skyblock genre. So basically you spawn on your own island, you cut down a tree, you bridge over to the other island, and then you log into Windcraft. See, you know what the server is. Still don't? Yeah, that's, that's fair. He didn't explain it very well. I'll go over this briefly so we can get right into the video. Windcraft is a fully built MMORPG that can be played inside Minecraft without any mods. But Asher, you use mods. Okay, true. You can use some mods that are allowed, and my mod pack will be linked in the description below. Also, just a note, the majority of these 100 days are played with the free cam mod installed, as I like getting high quality shots of the builds. I was told this might not be allowed, so I removed it about halfway through. Please, mods, if you're watching this, don't ban me. I don't know how I could have break anything. Ah! Also, if you want to support the channel by doing almost nothing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel, and I'd appreciate it very much. To my surprise, I only finished about half the content available in these 100 days. Yeah, half. So if we can pass 1,000 likes on this video, I'll go to 200 days and complete all the content Windcraft has to offer. Probably. Also, did I mention that Gwian? Yeah. The Grian built some of this server? Yeah, he's a head builder. No wonder it looks so good. When I say 100 days, I don't mean 100 real days. I mean 100 Minecraft days, which are about 20 minutes if you don't sleep. And I can't sleep, so yeah. Let's get right into the video with day one. So, to start off, I used an alt account because I wanted this to be a fresh playthrough, but I didn't want to delete all the stuff on my main account, so I joined the fresh alt and got to work. Because there's no dual wielding class, I decided to go with the assassin because swords and daggers are pretty cool. Throughout the playthrough, I chose to go with a multitude of builds to showcase every kind of weapon. Now, logging into day one, the first thing I did was the tutorial, as you might expect. Being extremely athletic, I missed this jump on the first try. I identified my first piece of armor, which is a leather helmet. I killed a zombie. I made it to the first city, which is called Ragni. I found a bunch of random crafting materials, so I just took them for myself and put them in my bank. I made my way down the Emerald Trail, talked to Thurk and got his chain. I did another quest that was this. Then I got this weird bug with my shaders, so I'll probably have to disable that later. On day two, I talked to a chef and he sent me to get some materials for a special recipe he was working on. While I was farming, I happened to come across a scared skeleton, and you know I just had to murder him. The recipe was for a royal cake slice, and he just gave it to me. I got my first block of emerald and put it in the bank. I spent the rest of the day doing some professions. My shaders were getting really, really annoying, so I decided to just disable them. So at the end of the day, I decided my end goal for the 100 days would be the Temple of Legends quest. So I decided that I'm going to do all the prerequisites of that and hopefully finish that up. I also created a super weapon. Look at those stats. Day three, I made it to the Nivla Forest. I infiltrated the spider cave to retrieve an ingredient for someone. I reached level 9 and made it to Detlis, one of my favorite cities. This place is really, really pretty. Now that I was level 9, I could use my super weapon, so I infused it with a lightning powder, and oh my god, that's the best weapon I've ever created. I'm basically invulnerable now. I found a pink sheep of greatness, and of course, I destroyed it. Then I killed a zombie, and he dropped legendary boots! Look at how good those are! Now day 4 I traveled into this tunnel and helped Miner Linton clear it of the corrupted. We met this weird cow guy and I went on a side quest to save his cows and put them on a boat. Then after that he came back and the cows ate through the stone and then I unlocked fast travel between Ragni and Deathless? What the hell? After that, I hit level 11 and unlocked Vanish, so now I can travel much quicker. I gave this guy some lunch, and in turn, he gave me a breathing helmet, which I used to swim underwater and collect some treasure for this other guy. He then gave me a three-star ingredient called the Old Treasure. So, day five, I decided the only crafting profession that I'm going to work on is weaponsmithing for now, because it just takes up way too much time. Then, with the help of Genpressed, I infiltrated the Ragni sewers and blew a giant hole in them in order to enter the decrepit sewers dungeon. I entered the dungeon, and this experience was really, really great. This dungeon had mob fights, parkour, and an interesting boss fight at the end with actual mechanics. Of course, with my super weapon, the boss really wasn't that that much of a challenge. The first thing I did on day six was complete the decrepit sewers dungeon again because I wanted this necklace that gave extra spell damage. 
I also completed a quest called Elemental Mastery, in which the game teaches you all about elemental damage. Of course, not in the way you'd expect, because I got trapped in this cave, and anyway, that's not the point. After that, I completed the first part of the Temple of Legends prerequisites. This involves collecting some mushrooms for a random guy and getting a bowl. I don't know why that's important. Day 7, I encountered this really interesting parkour that kind of moved as you moved with it. I collected a lava bucket and burned the spider webs away so that I could enter the second dungeon, the infested pit. I was level 15 and it was a level 18 dungeon. I'm sure it's fine. And it actually was. It wasn't that difficult at all. And because of my super weapon, I just destroyed the boss. The rest of the day I spent working on professions. And honestly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with them because of how time consuming they are. On day 8, I worked on professions for half the day, and like I said before, I'm not really sure if I'll be able to keep up with these throughout the, these 100 days just because of how time consuming they are. After that, we entered the Pigman Ravines and discovered that creepers actually exist in Wynn. I made this cute little creeper helmet, met all these other creepers, we had a dance party, it was great, and then at the end of the day, I entered Time Valley. So in Time Valley, apparently, there's a NPC named after me! Huh! I didn't know I was that famous! Only kidding. So I had to grab Asher's shovel and turns out that this shovel sent me back in time where I then had to go and do three different tasks to save his life because Asher got himself stuck in a time loop. After that, I met an alchemist who wanted me to make a potion and apparently his master was corrupted so we had to kill him. On day 10, I got woodcutting to level 15, went to Maltic, jumped in the well, and apparently a witch kidnapped a child, so we killed her. Then I got the Maltic's recommendation letter, which is actually required for the Temple of Legends quest, for some reason. After that, I created a new weapon out of tier 2 materials and infused it with a powder. On day 11, I made it to Nemract. I killed a bunch of zombies for a quest. I reached level 21 and unlocked a new spell called Multi-Strike. I killed Sailoros' brother and recovered his ashes. This is another thing I'm going to need for the Temple of Legends quest. And that simultaneously unlocked a really good grinding spot right by the cathedral. So I could get some combat levels here. On day 12, I found and identified these really good level 25 legendary boots. I spent today buying an entire new set of gold armor for our level 20s. I met up with these Harry Potter looking dudes and helped them uncover the secrets of corrupt magic or something. I found out their buddy Gareth went into the nether portal and came out corrupt. It was pretty interesting. On day 13, I returned to the wizards and helped them open the entrance to the Lost Sanctuary. Now this dungeon was actually really hard for me as I was super undergeared and a little underleveled. I really felt the difficulty spike and I almost died multiple times. However, the boss fight was kind of weird as the only thing I had to do was blow up this hole and then the boss kind of just fell in the lava and died. On day 14, I jumped into the pit, cured it of its corruption, Returned to the surface, and I was now high enough level to put on my entire new set of gold armor. After that, I entered another cave and returned a mask to a villager. Now, day 15 started off with me falling through the floor, and it ended up taking me to some weird dimension where I uncovered the secrets of Nemrak's past. Then I saw this. And this was the coolest animation I've ever seen! How many command blocks did they use for this? After that, I went into the Underworld Crypt Dungeon to save Nemrakt. There was a lot of surviving against a really hard boss for a couple seconds, and then I was on this boat for a bit, and that was cool. And the boss fight was really unique, as you summoned minions to do your job for you? But I ended up dying because I got one shot because everything was surrounding me at the same time. On day 16, I visited a corrupted village, and there were spikes everywhere, so I teamed up with a few people and we ignited TNT to see if it would blow up. It didn't work, so I was sent out to gather materials to make more powerful TNT, and that ended up working, and then I saved the village and got a corrupted potato. And this is actually another item that is needed for the Temple of Legends quests. On day 17, I had to grind a few combat levels, as I needed to be level 32 in order to to do the next quest that I wanted. So that's all I did for the entire day. 
On day 18, I hit level 31 and learned my last spell, Smoke Bomb. And then I spent the rest of the day looking at the auction house at all these beautiful items that I could never buy. On day 19, I finally hit level 32 and headed into Almuge, the desert city. I started a quest by talking to one of the guards, and he sent me all around the town trying to solve a robbery mystery. This was pretty interesting and actually took me all the way into day 20. On day 20, I finished the Sandy Scandal quest and unlock the Almuz bank. I defeated the bandits and they just don't bother the town anymore. It's pretty great. I also picked up a quest asking me to assassinate a bandit lord in the desert. That's really cool. I got my first fabled item and it costed seven blocks of emeralds to identify. I bought a legendary sword called Stab Sand and I can finally do more damage. Day 21, I did the quest to open the sand swept tomb. I had to meet up with some bandits in a sketchy area. They had me break into a mansion for them, so I guess I'm evil now? I don't know, dude. But I ended up getting the scepter and used that to open the dungeon. I also hit level 34, which means I can finally get a horse. So now I don't have to run everywhere. So I went to the stables and talked to the guy there. He had me kill this guy, I got a stable key, and then he gave me a horse. Finally, I can run anywhere. After that, I had to grind one more combat level in order to do the next quest. On day 23, I started the Win Excavation quest series. This is a series of four quests that will take me all the way to the end of the 100 days. The first part of the quest had me enter a tomb involving puzzles, and parkour, and I even fought a boss at the end. After that, I helped the tribe settle their differences and grab pink wool in order to enter the mummy's tomb. On day 24, I did the mummy's tomb quest. It had parkour, and then I killed the mummy, and it was actually kind of tough. He was really high level. This quest gave me another item that I needed for the Temple of Legends. Afterwards, I got to level 37 and completed a quest that had me gather slime. On day 25, I hit level 38 and ended up in the city of Rymek. On day 26, I killed a giant chicken and unlocked the lifts that are used all around the Mesa biome. I got to level 39 and teleported to Nemract, and I took a boat to go to Levagar, which is on the other side of the ocean. On day 27, I actually completely forgot that I unlocked the Sand Swept Tomb Dungeon. So I returned to Almuge and completed that dungeon. It was actually pretty interesting. I fought mobs, did parkour, and the boss fight was really, really fun. Day 28, I returned to Levigar and started questing in Gavel. I did a quest that involved me going all around the city to find some treasure. And then I traveled to the Ice Nations in order to help them quell an argument. It ended up taking me to a ghost ship and I murdered everyone. <laughs> Day 29, I tried to buy a sword from the Ice Nations vendor until I realized it cost 4,000 emeralds and I was so poor. I ended up going back to Levigar and grinding one last combat level to do the next quest. Day 30, I did a quest called the Heart of Levigar, where I had to fix the electrical system inside of Levigar by playing Flow inside of Minecraft. This was crazy. On days 31 to 33, I spent it grinding mobs in order to unlock the next couple of quests here in Gavel. I wanted to be a higher level so I didn't have to stop to grind more levels between each quest because it was getting really annoying. I ended up hitting level 46. Day 34, I spent the entire day looking at the auction house. There are just so many items you can buy. After that, I decided to go off adventuring some more. Day 35, I completed three quests. Firstly, I killed some ogre bosses in a cave. Then I found a bandit who decided to steal a meteor. And then I collected some skins from more ogres. Day 36, I infiltrated the ogre encampment and finished off the quest in the Levigar Plains by killing the ogre leader. So I returned to Wynn and headed to the ice village of Nisak for some more quests. I went on a weird quest and ended up obtaining a puffer fish. It was weird. On day 37, I went back in time and I watched as a powerful ice mage was corrupted. Now I must travel into the ice barrows dungeon in order to kill him and save Nisak. This quest was actually really cool and I had a lot of fun doing it. Day 38, I traveled into the Ice Barrows dungeon. This dungeon had a multitude of different obstacles such as parkour, mob fighting, and the boss fight was interesting because he only took earth damage. Now on days 39 through 41, I spent all of those days on one single quest. I had to open Bob's tomb and it took forever. I had to go all around the province looking for different items. I had to grind wolves in this cave for what seemed like forever for these depressing weapons just to turn them in for a quest. Shout out to CSA PKA for giving me that depressing bow. 
props to you. Saved me a lot of time. I finally got the tomb open, and shout out to Shriek and Skeleton Moose for helping me open the tomb. I got Bob's Crushed Soul, and this was one other item that I needed for the Temple of Legends quest. Now, day 42, I upgraded all of my gear to suit a level 50 build, as well as switching over to a poison agility build in order to make things a little bit easier. Spellcasting builds for Assassin get kind of tough on the higher levels. Then I went and did the Win Excavation Site B quest. Looks like we're doing another one of these. I'm excited to get through this, and I want to see how the quest chain ends. I also met someone who helped me with this quest, uh, shout out to Thunderlord89, he was a good sport. On day 43, I had to help a guy melt some ice in a cave. We tried using TNT, and I did this weird puzzle with lava, and eventually it worked, and we broke into this guy's mansion and stole everything. On day 44, I entered the House of Twain. This was an extremely complicated and fun puzzle quest that took me the entire day to complete. It involved throwing emeralds in hoppers, reading signs, I finished the quest and got an entire liquid emerald? What the hell? Day 45, I discovered the secrets of the Twain House. This quest jump scared me at like every turn. I was so afraid. It turns out that the owner of the Twain house helped ghosts pass on to the afterlife. Pretty interesting. On day 46, I headed back to Levigard to start questing in Gavel again. I discovered the mysteries of the Carrick Quarry and destroyed this giant robot thing. On day 47, I was tasked with finding and destroying a defective golem that resides inside of a mountain. Now, day 48 and 49, I linked together because I entered the swamp of Olux. I talked with an NPC named Shrek, I mean Shirk, sorry, ended up having to kill a witch for him and returned her soul to him. After that, I entered the sewers and killed a giant slime which was corrupting their water supply. I also helped to paint her with his masterpiece by lying to him about finding mythical creatures. Weird. Day 50, I did a quest that sent me around to gather some flowers. I even killed a witch to get one of them. Then I grinded to level 54 in order to unlock more quests that I wanted to do before returning back to the province of Wynn. On day 51, I explored some holes and discovered this giant dead worm. I also found a level 4 powder just chilling in this chest. I had to track down a beast that had been killing people around the town. I had to find evidence of its whereabouts. It involved doing mini fetch quests and was super annoying. This quest brought me all the way into day 52. On day 52, I finished the beast quest and I ended up literally killing Bigfoot. I returned to Olux and bought a new legendary weapon. After that, I teleported back to Deathless and headed toward the Dern jungle. I hit level 55 and sadly did not unlock the Death Knight class. But then I remembered that this was indeed Minecraft and not World of Warcraft. On day 53 and 54, I headed to the Dern jungle to uncover the secrets of the undergrowth ruin. I made it to Troms, one of the best looking cities, and I finally got to the Temple of Legends. However, I was not actually high enough level to get into the Temple of Legends, so instead, I did the prerequisites to the Undergrowth Ruins dungeon, which involves escorting this sheep and murdering it, and then traveling through this really weird dimension with interesting parkour, and eventually I recovered a spell used to let us inside of the dungeon. On day 55, I did the Undergrowth Ruins dungeon, and it was one of the craziest dungeons that I've ever done. It had really interesting slime parkour, an escort quest at the beginning, and a difficult boss fight with multiple phases. Overall, it was a really fun and successful day, and I actually really liked this dungeon. It was kind of different compared to all the other dungeons that I've done so far. Day 56, I robbed banks. Yeah, I was tasked by this guy to go to the bank of Debtless and rob it. When they didn't have enough money, I had to go to the bank of Almuge and rob them. Of course, they had so much money, so they just gave it to me. And apparently it was to cure this guy's sickness. I'm not buying that. I think he just wanted money. Day 57, I traveled to Zeit Island and talked to some weird guy. He sent me all over the place, and eventually I retrieved his cargo from some random guy at Maro Peaks. This quest took me everywhere. Day 58, I did part 3 of the Wind Excavation quest chain, and this one? took place on the volcanic islands. Now, this quest chain is getting super interesting because now they're asking me to spy on the head admins of the Win Excavation team. So I think something's up with them, but I don't know what it is. Anyways, I was caught and had to traverse caves of lava to escape. Eventually, I recovered the red crystal and turned it into the guy who's apparently on my side here. On day 59, I started the quest called The Passage, which unlocks fast travel between Ragni and Troms. I 
didn't really know what to do except for punch this altar. So I checked the wiki. It turns out I have to collect zombie eyes in order to activate the altar. And the best way of getting those is traveling all the way across the ocean into a city called Thanos, which has level 80 mobs guarding it. I'm so going to die. So I spent the rest of the day traveling to get those eyes. On day 60, I arrived in Thanos, the underground dwarven city. This place was huge and really reminded me of Lord of the Rings. I bought the zombie eyes and teleported back to Troms to defeat the boss and unlock the passage. I finally got fast travel from Ragni to Troms. Day 61 and 62, I wanted to catch up on my combat level so I could do more quests. Luckily, someone threw a combat bomb, so I used this chance to grind out a few levels inside of the Herb Cave. On day 63, I returned to Olux in the Gavel Province and infiltrated a secret golem lab. I may have accidentally not read any of the quest text and... I think I accidentally became the villain in this story. Oops. But besides that, the game wouldn't let me leave the cave, so I had to slash kill myself to get back. This is the first bug I found on the playthrough, and honestly, it's quite impressive this is the only one I found so far. On day 64 and 65, I traveled to Mage Island and met someone who didn't want to go to magic school for some reason. So I went for him, and I literally went to Hogwarts. This was the coolest quest ever and my favorite quest in the game. I got a wand, a magic book, picked out four classes, then attended them and graduated all within the same two days. This quest was insane and extremely fun and I unlocked fast travel all around both provinces. This is the best quest in the game and my absolute favorite. I love this quest and I would do it over and over again. On day 66, I accidentally spent all of my emeralds on something because I misread the price being 700 and it was actually 7,000 and oh god no, I'm so poor. I traveled to Pirate Cove to complete a quest and I started to put together some sort of treasure map. This took me all the way into day 67. The treasure map took me to some weird underwater cave where I fought a treasure guardian and then returned the treasure to the pirates on Pirate Cove. Apparently this quest gave me a dungeon key to Galen's graveyard. I have no idea what that is, but I'm assuming we'll get there eventually. Day 68 through 70 I spent grinding more combat levels in order to do more quests because I didn't want to go do a quest and then grind and then do a quest and grind so I decided to just grind them all out so I don't have to do any grinding for the rest of the 100 days. I went from level 60 to 65. I joined a party of a few people, actually. So shout out to LeafsaberX, 7 Vento 7 Johansson3, and Crack3D9. Now that I was at level 65, I had a bunch of quests to unlock and even a dungeon that I'm able to do. So I set back off into Province of Gavel to complete more quests and continuing to empower my character. I completed a quest involving infiltrating an orc camp in the swamp, then helped out a witch at a quest called Taproot. This quest took me into a really weird place, a giant outdoor cave thing. It was really weird. And then this happened and oh my god is that a worm? I finished the quest and got a tap root. Neat. On day 72 I killed some ogres and made a mask out of their skin. Then I decided to infiltrate their campsite. At the end of the quest there was another glitch where I got stuck and had to slash kill and what? It spawned me in turnips? I swear to- Then I got distracted and debtless buying a ton of new gear. And then I walked all the way back to turn in the quest and successfully quelled the orc threat. Day 73, this guy sent me on a quest to save spirits who were trapped underneath the cathedral. So I killed them and freed them and completed the quest. Realizing I had about six quests left to do in the Durn jungle, I returned there. I helped the tribesman find his son and save the boy from being corrupted and possessed. Then, apparently some kids are being kidnapped or something, so they sent me inside this mysterious laboratory-like thing to investigate. It's pretty interesting. I got stuck inside this quest? I couldn't move at all. I had to slash kill. Second glitch I found in this playthrough, really frustrating that this happened as I had to walk all the way back to the lab. Interesting puzzle in this quest though, pretty neat and hard as well, took the entire rest of the day. Day 75, I finished up with the out of my mind quest after the difficult puzzle. I had to kill this giant plant boss thing, it was actually really cool. Apparently it was this guy's pet though, so... Sorry. <laughs> I started another quest called Lost Royalty. Apparently the Prince of Troms was kidnapped by some bandits, so I was hired to get him back. 
Turns out that the prince just wanted to be a part of the mercenary group, so he ran away. Good on you, little man. I started a quest called Lost Souls, but I spent the majority of the day trying to figure out how to get the Abysso Galishes, legendary boots. I thought I'd lost them and I'd never be able to do this quest until I realized that I was actually wearing them the whole time. So I started this quest called Lost Souls, and it took me well into day 77. This quest took me all throughout a house discovering different puzzles and eventually led me into the basement where I obtained the boot container. I headed outside and handed it into the guy for my reward. It was now time. I had one last dungeon to complete for this 100 days, Dalian's Graveyard, and I'm now ready to go to it. I set sail to the island and prepared for my final dungeon experience within this 100 days. I teamed up with some pirates in order to uncover the secrets of the ocean and recover some treasure, as pirates do. I had to travel to three different islands and collect fragments of a map. However, the pirates betrayed me when we found the treasure and stole it, knocking me out. Luckily, I was able to build a boat back to Galleon's graveyard. Now I headed inside to quell the threat and prevent Redbeard from being resurrected. The dungeon was pretty good. There was a super fun minigame where I had to destroy ships, and the boss fight was interesting as I had to use cannons to actually hurt him. Day 81. The time was now. I must venture forth to the Temple of Legends to defeat the Destroyer of Worlds and become the legend myself. It is time, and boy oh boy is this quest a fun one. Because I've been hyping this quest up throughout the entire video, I'm going to explain everything needed for this quest as quickly as I can. First, we need Yaya's Stained Bull from the quest Mushroom Man. Then, we need the Creeper Mask from the Creeper Infiltration quest. Then, we need Maltic's Recommendation Letter from the quest Maltic's Well. Then, we need the Corrupted Potato from the Corrupted Village. Then, we need Bob's Crushed Soul from Bob's Lost Soul. Then, we need Sailor Rose's Brother's Ashes from the quest Grave Digger. Then, we need the Mummy's Bandage from Wrath of the Mummy quest. Then we need the climbing helmet from Ice Nations in order to access Marrow Peaks. Then we also need Light Dust from the Nether Portal, 12 Sky Vapor from Mage Island, the Old Toroto Hide from Rymek, the Aceto Leaf from Thurnell Jungle, Marrow's Eye Jewel from Marrow Peaks, and then the Coral Nelfors from Seaville Reef. So it took me from day 81 to 84 to just get ready to fight the boss for the Temple of Legends. It took me so long to do this quest, but you know what? There was actually a quest that took longer than this one, and we'll get to that after we beat this boss. It was day 85, and I was ready with an inventory full of potions. I headed into the cave to defeat the Corrupter of Worlds once and for all. This boss fight was crazy intense. I used like almost all of my potions, spam spells. This guy had 100,000 HP, 100,000 HP. I ended up almost dying as well and I had only 60 health left. It was crazy, but I ended up barely defeating him and taking my place among the legends. On day 86, the first thing I did was walk into the Temple of Legends. I was so happy I completed my goal for the 100 days, but we still have 15 days left, so we're definitely gonna go and do stuff in those days. I found the Altar of Legends while I was looking around in the temple. That might actually be something for 200 days. Remember, a thousand likes and I'll go to 200 days, and I'll do all of the content in Windcraft, or at least as much as I can do. On day 86, I completed another quest that cured a tribesman by finding a fountain in the jungle and obtaining bottles of youthful water. I don't know. Day 87, I hit level 70 and bought a whole set of new gear. I spent all day allocating the correct stats in order to be powerful enough to take on the last win excavation quest. I ended up getting to like 9,000 health, what? This brings us to day 88, and I finally complete the Win Excavation series of quests. Now, this quest, I believe is the longest quest in the game with about 30 stages, and it took me from day 88 to day 92 to actually complete. So it took me a really long time, over an hour. I talked to the King and Troms, and apparently the Win Excavation is an organization set on world domination, and I get accused of treason and hunted town? What the hell? I escaped the city and met up with some people who helped me clear my name and take down the organization for good. This quest was amazing and so well put together. I think this is the longest quest in the game. There's puzzles, parkour, mob fighting, exploration, discoveries, 
boss fights, everything. I literally kill a corrupted version of the guy who owns the Win Excavation Company. And he killed me a lot. I fought him four times with four buffs and died. I was finally able to beat all three of his phases, but it took a long time. After that, I met with the King of Ragni, who I haven't seen since day one. I was knighted and proclaimed the hero of Win, the crystals, the ones we collected, we destroyed them. And now, well, now I have to save Gavel. On day 93, I headed back to Gavel and I did a quest that had me put out fires in a forest by killing a slime. I don't know how that works. Day 94, I did a really interesting quest that involved a bunch of puzzles and one of them I had to match pairs with buttons. I left into a hole that was called the Lazarus Pit and got some healing water from a stranger and then returned it to the guy who hired me. Um, day 95, an elf asked me to find him a mushroom, and I said, oh, that sounds interesting. I guess I ended up eating the mushroom or something, and then I was in a castle, and then I was somewhere? I don't really know what's happening. I ate a mushroom, and now I'm here. <laughs> Look, it's, it's Windcraft. I don't know what else to say. There was a weird teleportation puzzle? That's kind of cool. Yeah, okay. I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. I, I don't know what this is. I I'ma just... Now I have to escape this guy? O okay. What? What just happened? On days 96 and 97, I did the Finding the Light quest, which had me go all around the province of Cavill and Sinferis, trying to find an entrance to the mysterious Light Realm. I love the city of Sinferis. It's actually my favorite city in the game. Basically, this quest sent me all around Sinfris to do random tasks for random NPCs to eventually create a helmet that lets me see the realm of light. This actually took me a really long time as I had to chase down a lot of different people for weird tasks. On day 98, I did a quest called Eye of the Storm, which uncovered a weird group of cultists that resided in Lexdale. I entered the Pit of Despair and killed the Prince of Darkness. I attained the Eye of Blood and unlocked some really overpowered rings. On on day 99, I did a quest that involved me hunting a banshee that deafened someone. I had to do some puzzles, overcome a few challenges, and then eventually I killed the banshee. At long last, the final stretch, the final day, day 100. It was pretty good, very relaxed, very fun. I completed two quests this day. First, I accidentally got myself stuck in a prison, so I had to escape and I may have stolen the guard's uniform. Don't ask. Then I returned to Wynn in Dern Jungle and I uncorrupted the roots beneath the forest, helped everyone out. And then I used the scroll to return to Deathless. It's sad that this video has to come to an end, but all things do. If you made it this far, thank you. Post a comment saying you made it to the end and I'll heart it in reply. 100 days, 33 hours. We got very far, but still, this is only like half the content of this server. This server is amazing. I'm so glad I made this video. A thousand likes, and I'll go all the way to 200 days. I know it's a pretty big number for my channel, but I hope I'm able to get it. There's so much more we haven't done. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, especially if you got this far. And as always, keep your pants on.